All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Welcome to happy hour. It's five o'clock somewhere. It, I think it's five o'clock one time zone. Well, that way. Yeah. Uh, it's six o'clock here, but we wanted to come live again and bring another virtual happy hour here on the show. So uh, cheers. Uh, welcome to the podcast. This is PT Pinecast, a podcast that saves physical therapists from missing out on amazing insight remarkable ideas and motivational stories in the world of physical therapy. I'm Jimmy McKay, your host. I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Owens Recovery Science. You can find them online at owensrecoveryscience.com for bringing you the first round, well, certification and the information you need to get uh, to get personalized blood flow restriction rehabilitation training in your clinical practice done properly. That's what you want. You want it done properly. Check them out online at owensrecoveryscience.com. If you're looking to bring that into your clinical practice, take a deep dive. Johnny Owens, Kyle Kimbrell, and that team uh, record their own podcast on iTunes now. It's called the, ironically, very creative, the Owens Recovery Science Podcast. I don't know where they come up with that name, uh, but find them out uh, there. The certification and the equipment uh, opening up some classes around the country right now. Some pretty cool locations like San Diego, which I think is Spanish for old wooden ship. Someone might want to fact check me on that one. Uh, also do uh, Falls Church, New Orleans, a bunch of different locations around the country. So if you're thinking about it, it's used in the four major sports, uh, college athletics around the world. So check it out. BFR. Might as well go with the Cadillac, the leaders, OwensRecoveryScience.com. And now, where's the hype music? There we go. It's the hype music. Here we go. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and now we're video casting this as well, at PC Pinecast on the socials. Drop your questions or comments or where you're listening at below. Want to know where you are? Uh, our guest today, BS in Biology from Stillman College, and his DPT... From the U. From the U. Uh, currently practices in Miami, Florida at the Bruce Carter Miami VA Medical Center as an orthopedic outpatient physical therapist where he's able to serve our country's veterans. Love that. Uh, also a strong advocate for diversity, equity, inclusion in the PT profession. And he shared his personal experiences in a blog post we're going to get into called Code Switching that was published in PT in Motion magazine from the APTA as well as an exchange essay chat, which was fantastic. But let's bring back, back to the show, because this is his second time on here, Dr. Michael Crow Marty. Back to the show. Here we go. And there he is. And we got the clapping. Hey, everybody. Uh, two years ago, we literally went back and forth online. And I was like, wait, was that how, how long ago? That was 2018. That was two years ago, uh, two years ago in Miami. Right. Or no, that was Orlando, right? You yeah, were in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a cool experience, man. And you were what? Were you a second or third year then? Uh, I was a I was a second year. So coming up on my third year. Yeah. I love that. Uh, so the experience was, this was completely, I love when random things happen and they're great. This was a, a, a contest that we did. Uh, our, spar, our sponsors, Arius Medical Staffing. Uh, they kind of came to us and like, let's do something different. Let's make some noise at conferences. Because if you've been to conferences, and I know many of us have, there's a lot of noise going on, right? And you want to cut through the noise. So we said, let's cut through the noise before the conference. What What is a barrier to students to coming to a national conference? And a lot of times it's cost. I mean, just, you know, just surviving in PT school, just just getting to class and, you know, getting everything turned in is hard enough. So Arias was uh, was nice enough to put up a thousand bucks and, uh, you know, say, hey, listen, uh, here's here's some money for travel expenses because you got to eat. You got to stay somewhere. You got to get there. APTA, do you want to give them a nod? They said, well, we'll we'll give free admission to a student. And I actually said, it's super weird to ask one student to go uh, and not actually have like, you know, someone to go with them. Uh, so you were actually able to bring uh, a classmate, right? Who 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 went with you? So I brought uh, my classmate, Mark Karam. And uh, I mean, that was a no-brainer for me. I, when you said I could bring someone else, it was instantly like texting him like, hey, we're going to next. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Um, so let's start with this. Number one, I saw you, 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 had, you had said something in a blog post and I literally hadn't read it. You wrote this, I guess, right after after the next and the contest experience and what you got to do there. Uh, we brought you into next and we actually gave you, we said, you're going to have your own episode. You're going to host your own episode. You can pick anybody you want. Do you remember who you picked? Remember who you episode or who you interviewed? Yes. So, um, Cicely and, uh, Joe, 
so they yeah. were big in sports. And so, you know, I was like, well, and I saw their, you know, what they were speaking on. And I was like, you know what, this is definitely a group of people that I want to kind of talk to and pick their yeah. brain. So we'll, we'll put the, uh, we'll put the link to the episode that you actually got to host, uh, Cecily DeStefano, no stranger to the show and Joe Black, uh, no stranger to the show, just cause he, uh, doesn't go away. Uh, loved Joe. Um, but, uh, you got that experience. So how was the experience going to next? Um, knowing that that barrier was gone. That was our goal. Remove, remove a barrier and then see what happens. So how was it? Uh, it was good. It was, you know, I was able to enjoy it a lot more, not having to, you know, worry about the financial burden of it. Um, and then just kind of like, you know, I, kind of, I guess, was feeling myself, you know, knowing that I was going to be ho- helping host the show. So, you know, I kind of was like, yeah, you know, walking around like I'm big stuff, wearing suits and everything to all the uh, meetings and stuff. How was the conference? What What did you expect? I mean, I know it's two years ago, but what did you expect it to be like? And then did did reality match that? Uh, so that was, yeah, that was definitely, that was my first next. Um, and, you know, from other classmates and professors, they told us it would be kind of smaller than CSM, but it's still kind of, the same okay. essence, but you know it was still a good time. You know it was what June in Orlando, so it was hot for sure, uh, right? But uh, you know just having everything right there. You had Disney when you had some downtime to go to. So I know me and some of my classmates, we actually went and um, went to Epcot and did uh, drinking around the world. So that that was pretty cool, uh, right? Exactly. Cheers. So yes, the the first question is always the hardest. Uh, what are we drinking? Right. Uh, so I actually have some uh, Hennessy, as you can see back here, uh, with a little bit of Coca-Cola. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Hennessy. Uh, Michael is trying to get a sponsorship with Hennessy. I like the product placement, my friend, is is very on point. I'm doing. Yeah. I, had, I I don't like when I have one beer of a kind left in the fridge. I got to get rid of it. So this is the Bloodline from uh, from Flying Dog, the Blood Orange Ale. So let's do a virtual cheers here into the camera and the microphone. There we go. And cheers, cheers, cheers. to you, my friend. Having you back yeah. on the show. Um, since next, I'm glad I'm glad we removed the barrier. I'm glad you got to experience it. I wish we could do that more, and maybe we should start looking at how to do that more. I like that the APTA literally just did a 90 degree pivot. We got COVID. We can't have we can't have a conference. It's a virtual conference, and they literally just said we're going to change the delivery method of of our information, and people are raving about it. Um, how uh, what what happened after that? Because you. I mean, spoiler alert, I see a doctor in front of your name and PT after, so you graduated, right? Right. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> I graduated, um, but in between that and graduating, I actually started a blog post. Um, and so, basically, I was kind of inspired by a physical therapist, Greg Todd, who came and spoke to us. And he was just kind of like uh, telling us, you know, kind of find a way to put your name out there. And, um, you know, I didn't know exactly how I could put my name out there, but I just started the blog and, you know, I would share like on my social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and I actually, one of my blog posts spoke to my experience with next and just kind of how, or, um, with you all in the scholarship and how, like, there was such a level of uncertainty that probably could have just changed everything from that point on had I not, you know, answered the phone call. Um, when you guys called me, I was in the middle of a workout, and was unsure of the number. Um, and I usually either ignore them or block those numbers. But something told me to just pick up and, you know, see see who it was. And, you know, it was you on the other line. And I was like, hey. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it was just so random to me that I was like, what? Is this serious? Like, you know, I'm like, am I being joked right now? You know, I'm looking around the gym, seeing if it's my classmates trying to see if I'm reacting crazy. So. So we pulled your name out. And of course, the radio guy in me was like, yo, I know the winner. Email them. I don't get any audio out of that, man. Or like, right. hey, call me later. But you've already had that moment of like, oh, whoa, like whatever, whatever comes out. So here I am calling and I'm like, hey, hey, is this Michael? And we're like, yeah. And I'm like, hey, uh, what are you doing right now? You're like, working out at the gym. And I'm like, do you want to go to the next conference? And you're like, sure. And I'm like, you're the contest winner. And you're like, Oh, for real? And I'm like, yes. And that was a, it was a great real moment because I'm glad you picked up. And that was the great blog post that you wrote, which was essentially what, what was the lesson you wanted to teach people about that? Just, uh, I mean, it was, you know, that was a small example, but like just to take risk, you know, um, for me, I was, 
I was thinking it was like a debt collector, you know, somebody trying to, you know, collect some kind of money from me. So I really didn't want to pick up, but I was like, you know what, what, at least, you know, find out and then I can block the number if it's not who, you know, somebody I want to hear from. So, um, you know, but from that point, uh, from that point on, it's just kind of been, my mentality is like, take a risk, even if I'm not sure, you know, just kind of, you know, take a chance, especially if there's something positive that could be on the other side of it. So, you know, trying to say yes to every opportunity. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so after you write that article about your experience, uh, you wind up graduating, uh, graduating. So congratulations, graduating from the year. Um, and, uh, and you, uh, you started working at a school where, where you are now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I actually started, um, event, uh, first in Atlanta, um, and then came back to Miami where I'm now working at the VA. Um, but I actually, in between that, I actually gave a couple lectures to, uh, University of Miami's DPT students um, about diversity, equity, and inclusion um, based off of an article that I wrote called Code Switching, um, which kind of shared my experience in PT school and kind of being the only African-American male in my class. And so that was, you know, pretty cool to be able to do that. And it's kind of, that in itself has opened a lot of doors for me, um, for sure. And wasn't expecting that at all. Um, when I initially wrote the blog, um, I was met with a lot of resistance from like family members, um, and more really? so, yeah. And, and it was more so, I mean, they, it was definitely like, um, just like be careful cause they were concerned of what kind of feedback I would be given. I had my fiance though, or my girlfriend at the time who was like, you know, Oh no, you should do it. You know, I, I think it's a really, you know, it's a really good message and it may help someone else out. So when I press submit, it was kind of like a, you know, one of those when I, when I press submit, but, you know, I was definitely shocked. I won't say shocked, but, uh, appreciative of the feedback that I finally got. I think I posted in September or October, October of 2018 or 2019. And, um, yeah, 2018, I'm sorry. And then it kind of took off in January. Um, and so, you know, and it, it was on Twitter that I saw that people had saw it, you know, and it was from there, it just like was more and more people kind of like, oh my gosh, I love your, you know, I love your blog. And yeah. from that, it just opened so many doors for me. I don't want to skip past something. Some mm -hmm. people told you not to do that. And probably because they were concerned about you. Mm -hmm. right? It was your family. Mm -hmm. If there wasn't a reason for you to, a better reason for you to write it, that's a great example of why you needed to write it. I understand why they were telling you like, Hey, be careful. Like you don't you know how it's blow back on you for speaking up. Mm -hmm. But if there isn't a better reason to write something like that, that's a great shining example of like, it needs to be said. Right. Right. And yeah, they, you know, they were worried about like, um, you know, like possibly, you know, as far as future employment, I hadn't sure. seen a job. So they were like, you know, what if someone thinks that you're trying to stir stuff up and, you know, I was like, no, I don't, you know, I don't think it would be, especially with my tone, I didn't think it would be perceived that way. So that's kind of when I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, submit this or post it. The fact that you needed to think about your tone. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And yeah, exactly. So like, I definitely, and I think if like I were to post this today, they wouldn't think twice about it. You know, they would be like, no, you need to go put this out there, you know, but I guess because, you know, um, it, it wasn't so like um, talked about in time, right. just two years ago. So, you know, it was kind of still like some, hey, this could be met with resistance. Just be careful. You know, of course we support you, but we just want you to know if you have some, you know, negative feedback, then, you know, just that you're prepared. They knew the temperature. They knew right. what would happen, right? They knew which way the wind was blowing. Exactly. So good for you for hearing that from people you trusted who knew probably had your best interest at heart, which is like, right. be careful. Mm -hmm. And you still did it because right. there was a message mm -hmm. that you thought needed, that deserved to be shared and you shared it. Mm -hmm. I've never had to think twice about producing a podcast episode. I've done more than 700 of these. I've never had to think twice about my tone, about backlash, about what it, it could possibly do to my career. I've never had to do that. I'm 40 years old and white. I've never had to think about that. That bothers me that you did. Right, yeah. I'm bothered. I'm 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 mad for you. 
Yeah, it, it was, you know, for sure. And it was frustrating because, you know, I wanted to put it out so bad. And, you know, honestly, with my intent, I was literally just sharing my experience. And it wasn't until other minority students reached out and were like, you know, oh, my gosh, you know, I feel the exact same way. I'm going through the exact same thing. You know, this is like inspiring for me moving forward. And that's mm-hmm. when I realized kind of like the the power that it had behind it. But initially, it was just kind of really just sharing my experience, being vulnerable with people and, you know, seeing how many others, how many others could relate was kind of like, you know, refreshing for sure. In a sense that, you know, it inspired others, not refreshing that multiple people are going through what I'm going through. Sure, sure. No, but you, it, something resonates when the audience is listening or reading or watching and they have thought that or felt that, or you're putting words to their emotions. Mm -hmm. That's when something goes viral or whatever you want to what explodes or whatever you want to call it is when you put words to someone's emotions especially when they were afraid maybe they were afraid to say them mm-hmm. for repercussions or they don't want to look a certain way or they you know they're 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 honestly afraid to say it like good for you for doing it i don't i mean I, that's not an easy thing to do i, I can't imagine i can't imagine you know i can't even say that i can't imagine if that that that, that would even be an easy thing to do so let, let's talk about the uh, talk about the uh, talk about what code switching was because mm-hmm. I had never heard of the term until I heard it from you, and I want to make sure the audience understands it clearly. Okay, uh, so basically, code switching is kind of um, a person changing their um, mannerisms or you know the way that they talk based on whatever environment that they're in uh, that they perceived as the normal way of acting or talking. So like. Okay. For- Example, um, I went to um, a historically black college and university in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, um, where I think it was 95, uh, 97% African-American. You know, I talked on campus way different than what I did when I showed up to University of Miami on the first day. Um, you know, one, I'm from the South, so like I have kind of a Southern draw, talk a little slower. I definitely, I know I don't pronounce every letter in each word. so. That in itself, I'm kind of like, all right, let me make sure I enunciate myself so that people can understand what I'm saying. But also just kind of, you know, I know with unconscious bias, people can, you know, perceive certain things about you just based off of one, when they see you and two, you know, when they hear you speak. So I didn't want, you know, people to assume that maybe I was an educator or anything like that because I was talking slower than others. So, you know, I try to make sure that, you know, I present myself in a way you know, then with the whole code switch and, you know, where it made them kind of feel comfortable where I sounded like them, you know, it's a lot <laughs> different now where I kind of am more secure in the space that I'm in. So I don't feel the need to code switch as much. Um, but, you know, I still have those moments, you know, where I feel like, cause it's almost essentially a, a su- survival skill. It's a personality uh, camouflage. Right, exactly. And so, and I mean, you know, everybody does it in a sense, like, no one goes and talks to their professor the same way they do their right. classmates. I don't talk to my grandmother like how I talk to my best friend. Right. And I, I talked about this on a previous episode. Once I heard about what code switching was, and I was like, well, I do that a little bit, but I do it for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Really, I think it's like it's it's what you're doing, but it's why you have to, why you feel like you have to do it. That's that's really that's that's the bigger issue. Right. Right. Yeah. And so. <clears throat> For sure. I agree. You know, it's like everyone does it, but it's like, why are people doing it? And I think that's what the difference is between, you know, why people are, you know, doing it out of respect and then some out of just the pure, uh, you know, essence of wanting to be accepted because we're all humans, even the antisocial crowd still want to be accepted by the other antisocial crowd. So, you know, we all want to be accepted in some form or fashion. And I think, you know, it's almost in a sense you go through life so long and you realize what's acceptable to those around you and what isn't. So you kind of just try your best to do what you can to be accepted. I like that. When you when you actually did this and you were like, submit, and after you know, a day later, a week later, how did you feel? And then how did you feel once it really started to gain traction and people were really passing this around? Because some a lot of people don't know when you hit submit, something might not go viral or might really not be, resonate with people until it hits this certain level of people reading it and talking about it and saying, yeah, I, uh, this resonates with me. When you read this, I, he's putting words to my thoughts. How'd that feel? Yeah. So initially um, when I wrote it, it was just kind of like my immediate 
followers on Instagram and my classmates who saw it. And, um, you know, they, I had several reach out to me and was like, oh, you know, I, I hope that I never made you feel like you needed to be anyone besides yourself, things like that. Some of it I, I definitely uh, appreciated, but then some of it I was like, oh, see, this is kind of what I wanted to avoid is people like feeling sorry for me because right. you know, I, I didn't <clears throat> want anyone feeling sorry for me. You know, I do what I do just because, you know, it's the way I kind of grew up. Um, but then once it really blew up and kind of caught wind on Twitter and with the APTA, uh, the polls, <laughs> I was kind of feeling myself like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because, well, because of just something my name was attached to kind of has been circulating. Sure, so, hell yeah. Right? So, you know, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. I'm, I'm messing with my girlfriend and I'm kind of like, yeah, I can't talk right now. I've got a couple other things to tend to, you know, just messing with her. Right. But, um, but then once I actually, you know, were, were, was reading the comments of what people were saying about the blog, that's kind of what was like the most humbling to me, um, just to see how m many other people resonated with it and could, you know, relate and kind of, you know, were grateful that I spoke up and said something. And I didn't realize that I was one of the first people to kind of put something out there about it. So put words to emotion. And do any we didn't we, do any come to mind? Because I didn't, I didn't prepare you to say, "Hey, bring me some comments." But if it, if it, if some come to mind, it, it probably means they really resonated. Is any any come or, or at least emotions behind those? Yeah. So actually, I had one guy who I actually considered a mentor who reached out to me, or I still consider him a mentor. Um, he was actually the first African American male PT I saw ever, and I saw him finally. I think in my. Uh, the end of my first year for PT school, he came and spoke to us and I got his contact information and we kind of stayed in touch. And he reached out and he said, man, I just want you to know, like, you, you know, what you've done is so inspiring. It's really kind of, you know, made me want to kind of move differently. And, wow. um, and for me, I like had to screenshot the comment, like this is going in the archives because it just was like, man, this guy that I look up to so much is telling me that I inspired him just by kind of using yeah. my voice. So that's just you know the first one that I can think of offhand. Man, wow, look at that! Like you, there was this was someone you looked up to as a mentor. Mm -hmm. Pretty impactful, right? Like mm -hmm. if I were walking into a profession and I hadn't seen mm -hmm. a physical therapist, I hadn't seen someone who looked like me until the end of my first year, and you did that, and of course you you look at that person with a little bit of reverence. Mm -hmm. That person turned to you because you were brave enough to share something that really resonated that's got to feel great right exactly and so and then it just you know i mean while that was at the the top of the pile you know there were still other ones from just strangers like and then it almost got to the point where i was seeing like where the comment came from like if i saw like california i'm like man it made it all the way to california. yeah you know so yeah. they definitely were you know it felt good and i was like reassured like this was the right move for sure good i'm glad you were um was there any negativity no, uh, Good. and and I, you know, I think if anyone had anything negative to say, they just didn't say anything at all. All right, so, right. So, and I don't think many, you know, would have said anything negative. Hopefully, so. I like it. Uh, good on you. We'll make sure we drop the the, the link to uh, to code switching in that article. Up, oh, it's already in there. It's already in the comments below. If you're watching this live or on the replay on uh, on Facebook, so. You know, I don't want to go around the block. It's my term. I don't want to go around the block twenty times by saying, but like, I'm, I'm really proud of you. Like, I don't know if I would have had the courage. I, I honestly don't. I, I've never had to have the courage to really question what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. And you did have to question that. You did question it, and the answer was still, "I want to share this," mm -hmm. which I thought was great. So, thank you for doing that. Thank you for right. being brave. Uh, so, let's talk about some different things. Mm -hmm. uh, how to navigate the, the the PT world as a new grad, um, <laughs> well, new grad right now as well. Uh, everybody's learning which way north is now because uh, we're we're navigating from a from a different star that keeps moving. Um, you you get to speak on this a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, if there's any new grads watching. Kind of my biggest advice is accept every opportunity that's given to you. Um, so many people have approached me with things that, you know, asking me if I want to be a part of this or if I want to work towards this or do that. And I mean, honestly, I don't know if I'm spreading myself thin, but I just don't know how to say no. And I know kind of it's like, you know, use my youth to work hard right now, you know, right. get involved as much as possible and, you know, kind of get involved so that I can have a voice once again. 
and also just kind of see the behind the scenes for PT. And so like, for example, I now serve on the um, American Academy of Sports Physical Therapy um, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. And when I was approached with it, I was like, I don't know what this entails. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna, I'm signing myself up for, but I was like, they came to me, you know, why would I reject, you know? And that in itself kind of, you know, helped me get involved. And then, you know, I've had um, professors or students reach out to me asking if I could come speak to their class or, you know, now that Zoom is a big thing, I've joined several mm -hmm. Zoom calls. And so, you know, it's like, for me, it's like, never say no. If I don't, you know, if you give me time, if I don't know what's going on, I'll figure out by the time I have to deliver. So, you know, that's just been my biggest thing is try to, you know, get your name out there and get involved as much as possible. Why do you keep saying yes to something like that? As someone who says yes and has gotten to a point where I have to say yes less, mm -hmm. because eventually there will be burnout and you need to do self-care for, you know, you have, right. you have to monitor that. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're not questioning it yet, don't keep mm -hmm. going, Put you know, keep, keep the foot on the gas pedal. Why do you think they're asking you? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad they are. I, I'm glad they are. I think it uh, really has a lot to do with kind of um, the blog code switching, but then me kind of, you know, keeping my foot on the gas. And like, it wasn't just that. I kind of was sharing how I went to speak to University of Miami and how, you know, went on to do the student exchange chat. Like, I think they're asking me because they see that this is something that I'm passionate about. I mean, that's the answer. Right. You, everybody can write a blog post, right? Mm -hmm you had it took bravery to write that blog post and then and then what'd you do you kept your foot on the gas you didn't slow down um that's why make sure you know that that's that's a that you know don't have uh, I, can't, I can't say don't have imposter syndrome because i have it you're gonna have it your whole life but make sure you know they asked you for a reason it's not an accident like mm -hmm. you did you stood up when others didn't and you did something and good on you you should be commended for that so um, so what do you get to talk about when you get asked to zoom in or, 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 or you know, talk about, you know, navigating the, the, the world as a new grad PT? What are what are like your what are your points? What are the things you want to hit and make sure those students walk away knowing, OK, I need this is my mindset I need to have right now. Right. So uh, mainly I try to touch on kind of uh, implicit or unconscious bias and kind of how it affects, you know, diversity, equity and inclusion. I try to let people know it's it's not wrong. Um, to have implicit biases, like it's normal. It's literally conditioned into our, right. our brain and the way we interact with others. You know, however, it it is, you know, I would say wrong when you act on those or your behavior dictates your unconscious bias. So I try to let people know it's it's extremely important to identify what your unconscious bias are. And, you know, I think when you do that, it allows you to consciously make an effort to avoid your actions, you know, dictating being dictated by a bias that you have towards or against another group yeah it's important right so you got confirmation bias which is like i'm just going to seek out things that confirm what i already believe right which isn't really seeking anything out that's literally just that's spinning in circles and then you have like even worse and i learned that I, the only reason i'm able to use these terms is my buddy's a psychologist and i'm like what's the word for the thing where people just don't want to listen and he's like that's cognitive dissonance like i've given you a logical explanation of why a is doing b and you're just nah i reject that because it doesn't fit my narrative right so, you know rejecting the fact that i have a bias i can't say that of course we all have it. you're saying it's normal okay but not not paying attention to it and then saying well how how can i actually consciously now mm -hmm. think about what my bias is doing or want or sorry i say wants me to do it's pulling me this way but let me think about why I'm doing that. Let me not just be pulled by this unconscious thing that I need to respect exists, but I should consciously say, I need to question this of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right. Is that, exactly. what, how, how do you see, how do you see that? What is, what is the reaction when you're talking about this? Because I'm guessing, and this is what I do as an interviewer. And when you're speaking to students in an audience, my guess is you're reading the audience, right? And they're giving away a lot of information, right? If this was poker, they're showing, they're tipping cards. Right. Um, what are the things that you see either, you know, in the moment consciously or, so, or, or what are they saying? What's the reaction to when people hear you speak? So a lot of them uh, I've noticed, well, you know, are in denial 
about having bias, you know, because everyone wants to do the whole I don't see color thing. And it's like, well, right. you have you have eyes, we all see it. And it's not just, you know, color, it's everything. But um, so, you know, I kind of will let them know, like, hey, I have my biases. And I actually, Harvard has a test, uh, an implicit bias test. And I, like, will show my results to what groups I'm biased towards and, you know, biased against, well, I won't say biased against, but biased towards. And, um, you know, I tell them, like, hey, it's it's normal. It's, it happens. And, like, you'll see the the couple that are either asleep, <laughs> rolling their eyes, you know, but it's a lot of people who are engaged and who want to figure out, one, how do they identify their biases? And, you know, one of the examples I tell people is if you're sending out an email to a group of people, you know, pay attention to the order that you decided to mention people. That will tell you a lot of times, you know, you don't even realize that the person you're most comfortable with or you know, the person that comes to mind first is who you're most comfortable with. And so, you know, you'll wow. notice that or, you know, for example, when you go out with your classmates, what group do you notice yourself constantly going out with? You know, of course, your whole class isn't going out, all 60 of you all. But if you notice the same five to 10 are always going out or, you know, studying together, then who are you? You know, that kind of gives you an insight about who you feel comfortable around, which, you know, essentially is where our bias comes from. You literally take the ammo out of their gun, right? If anybody's going to, by saying, here's my implicit bias. Here it is. It's on, it's on display. Take right. it, whatever, whatever that's worth to you. Um, because you're saying it's there. Implicit bias is not neither good nor bad. It is what you do after that. After you are exposed to, you're biased. We're all, we all, but not just you. This is not, I'm not indicting someone. Everyone is. Right. What do you do about it? Right. Um, and I, I, when I was asking that question, I was like, I know he's going to, you, you, you were picking up on unconscious body movements of like, okay, here we go again. I don't, I'm, I'm rejecting instead of, all right, let me listen to this and let me be accepting. Like you, you probably know your batting average in terms of talking. Like what, what do you, what percentage in terms of the audience you like, okay, there's a bell curve, right? Everything's a bell curve. We learned that in school. You know, you've got the people that, you don't need to talk to you. They they're they're in the choir. They're 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 singing the same song. You have people that are never ever going to agree with you, and let's not waste our time on them. And then you're aiming at that middle, and right. you're reading you're reading body language, and you're looking at eye contact, and who's listening, and who's watching the you know the slides, and who's listening to you. Um, does that motivate you? Most definitely. Um, and I have like a. I think I have a good sense of humor, so I like to like you know do things that will tie in you know. Where people will find it funny so like i'll take video clips from like the office which you know I don't, there's the famous scene of when they have diversity day and um it's i think maybe season one episode one of the office and that's kind of like how i will open up my lecture you know just to kind of hopefully kind of um take the tension off of the classroom because it's a very uncomfortable or it can sure. be a very uncomfortable topic to talk about but you know i'm not there to judge anybody because especially if you come to listen and learn, then, you know, that's step one to me. You know, if you come in wanting to argue or disagree or not listen, then, you know, then that's, you know, I think something, you know, that you have to deal with, you know, when you look in the mirror. But, you know, I try to make sure that I take as much tension off as possible. I'll, yeah. I, you know, I'll throw a couple jokes out, kind of, you know, like I said, mention my own implicit bias to hopefully see that, hey, while I'm talking to you all about it, I'm not perfect either. And, you know, we're going to make mistakes. We're all yeah. human. You're not there to tell them anything. You're, you're there to expose them to information. And then it is there to, is on them to take that information and do what they will. And some will roll their eyes. And those people are on the left side of that bell curve. They were never going to pay attention anyway. You're aiming at that middle. That's a pro move, man. By the way, that's a pro communication move, which is how do I speak? How do I literally just be like, here's the elephant in the room. This is uncomfortable. And you literally just like, how do we make things that are uncomfortable, comfortable? We make a joke about it. Um, as long as there is an underlying opportunity for us to take this uncomfortable moment and have a conversation about it. If, if you're doing there, you get, you're, you're on the five yard line, man. I mean, you're, you're close. That's a pro communication move in my, in my view personally. Thank you. Um, answering that phone call with something, right? You never, you never grow if you're always doing the things you already know how to do. You saw a phone number when I was calling you, 
randomly, like noon on a Tuesday or whatever, to tell you about that scholarship. Um, but this is something that that resonates with you. Talk to me about what do you mean? Like when you when you talk about this term, you never know, or excuse me, you never grow if you're always doing the things you already know how to do. It sounds that sounds pretty straightforward, of course, but mm-hmm. we reject that sometimes because we wind up doing the things we're always doing. Right. Um, so for me, I <laughs> I like to tell people, you know, or I just think that people hate doing things they suck at. You know, it's like because yeah. now you know it's you know it's giving them. Um, subconscious about things, you know, or they're becoming self-conscious about things. And, you know, they're like, oh, well, I'm a terrible public speaker. So they're going to go through basically the rest of their lives, you know, being a terrible public speaker because they always shy away from the opportunity. So, you know, I kind of, you know, notice I'm trying my best to always be aware of like, wow, that was terrible. I, I really sucked at that or, you know, and try to go back or do, you know, put myself in more positions to improve. Um, my little brother, he's growing up playing basketball and I can... T- Grow, um, related to sports. He's left-handed and loves to go left-handed. So the moment that I make him go right or use his right hand, he's like, all right, I quit. Game is over. Right. I'm like, well, at this rate, you're never going to get good with your right hand. Game. Exactly. And so, you know, I just feel like, you know, as a person, you want to keep growing in life. You never want to be at the same place, you know, for more than a month. And so the best way to do that is to take on new challenges and new tasks. And you know, that's something that I kind of pride myself in is when I've, you know, done one thing or reached one goal, it's like, all right, let me set up for the next goal. What can I improve at or become better at? That's a good outlook. It sounds like there's a lot of self-reflection going on, which is something that I personally uh, rejected in PT school. Not so much self-reflection, but like writing it down. For some reason, me writing it down was required, right? Right. And I just, I hated it. And I, re- and I probably to your other point, right? That was me going, that was me going right. I didn't want to go right. I wanted to go left. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to sit down and write something down. It made me feel weird because I didn't feel like I was, I didn't feel like I was ever being eloquent if, if I was actually typing or writing. But if I had a conversation, I'd talk for an hour. If, it, if I had a conversation with beer, I'd talk for two hours. But it sounds like you, uh, you, you grabbed onto the value and benefit of self-reflection pretty early. Yeah. Um, well, it definitely came from PT school. Like when they were prepping us for clinicals, they said the only way you can become a better therapist is if you reflect on what you're good at and what you're bad at. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard definitely to, to jump in on things you're bad at in a group of, you know, in a group of people. So like, for example, maybe your manual therapy skills in school aren't the best. Don't say like, raise your hand to go mess up in front of, you know, your sure. class, but at least making that, you know, effort to, okay, class is over. This is what I need to put the work in on. So, you know, I definitely was like, well, let me apply this to everything in my life. Like, you know, this can take me far if I kind of, you know, try to find what I'm not good at and become at least good enough to be able to deliver or be able to participate in. It also comes from being a perfectionist. Like I want to be perfect at everything that I do. Yeah. So, that kind of is definitely what drives me a little bit as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what, you know, I was, I was, ha- I was today years old when I recognized that I don't, I don't feel good feeling bad about what I'm doing. Right. But to get better, that's the only way. And right. the only way really to figure out how far you've progressed or what you need to do to progress mm-hmm. self reflection right there. We got some uh, people from the U jumping in there. Rich Severin coming in saying, giving you a go, go canes. So I like that very much. <laughs> Rich. Good to see you, Rich. Um, so on top of just uh, self-reflection, there is also what are you going to do with it, right? And this goes into the probably the root of most PT school essays, which is why do you want to be here? You know, what I, I, you want to be in PT school. No one wants to be in PT school. You want to go through PT school to do something. So giving back is something that is 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 coming up uh, a lot when you get to talk with with students and, and, and anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um... I met my RA in college. He he told me, um, lift as we climb. That was uh, basically as we are trying to reach our goals, you know, reach back and help others achieve theirs. And that's kind of something that stuck with me. He kind of, you know, told me what classes I need to take, you know, what, you know, organizations to try to be familiar with or join. And so kind of now for me, it's, you know, I've become the mentor uh, to a lot of people who reach out to me via social media. 
which is, I mean, I think it's an excellent idea. I, every time I think about taking a fast from social media, you know, I'm like, man, they, the people need me, you know, it's like, <laughs> I have, you know, students reach out, especially pre PT students who, you know, who I've either known before or just who randomly have reached out and asked kind of like, Hey, you know, what is PT school like? What are the, you know, things to get in? You know, what do I need to know to get into PT school and things of that nature? And there were actually several pre PT students who had read the blog. And I was like, man, you guys are dedicated because I, I mean, I looked at the APTA website for like, you know, when it was time for the PT cast, but like they just kind of, you know, randomly hungry. browser. Yeah. So I'm, you know, it's good to see the next generation of PTs are, you know, so hungry for information. And, you know, I just try to do my part to make sure that, you know, I have as many, um, as many, you know, people under me, just so that I can help, you know, I don't yeah. do anything in return, really just to more than to say, Hey, you know, I was able to help you and glad to see you kind of achieve your goals. Lift as we climb, man. I like that a lot. Yeah. The funny thing is I think that PT students, I got no data to support this. I'm just winging this one. I think they've always been just as, just as hungry. Right. But if there's nobody writing that code switching blog, if there's no one doing that exchange essay chat, they're not finding the information they're actually hungry for. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, they don't find the thing they're hungry for, they go somewhere else. And that's where we probably lose a lot of people in terms of, well, if there's, if, if Michael, who's pretty proactive in terms of self-reflection, what do I want to do with this profession? And the first time you see someone who looks like you is at the end of your first year, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. How many people did we lose before that, 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 didn't that looked around and said, I don't, this isn't for me because I know it's not for me. I'm looking around this. There's no one like me. So I think this go, I mean, everything's full circle on the show, not even on purpose by accident, but you putting that out there, that thing's going to exist, right? Someone's going to trip across that because of tweets or retweets or, you know, search engine optimization or something. They're going to find that and they're going to go, okay. And they're going to go a little longer and maybe they lift as they climb too. And they're going to bring one more person with them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think the fact that you were brave enough to, uh, to say those things, even when people around you who were probably had your best interest in there said, maybe be careful about that. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Good on you for doing it. And then how about seizing the moment? It seems like your whole life is about seizing mm -hmm. the moment, man. Like your whole, like, I don't know, your whole vibe is like, let's just do it. Let's do it. Right. Um, probably a good and a bad thing. Um, I kind of <laughs> I I act on impulse a lot. Um, but I mean, you know, I try to make sure it's always in a positive way. Um, and just kind of how I said earlier, you know, accepting every opportunity. Um, right now, I kind of feel like it is the moment, you know, where people are listening. So that's why I'm like, well, we've got, I've got people's attention or we've got people's yeah. attention. They want to hear, take advantage of it because, you know, if we get them now, it'll become, you know, the long game. It'll become a marathon, not a sprint. We'll be doing this for a very long time. And, you know, that's the ultimate goal, of course. We want to kind of, keep people's attention <clears throat> and keep people wanting to learn. Um, I think that's what's most important. Yeah. I feel like anyone who tunes in any, I mean, it's, you know, 648 where I'm at, I'm sure people could find a million other things to be doing at 648. Yep. They've decided to tune in and listen. So to me, that means that they're interested. And, you know, like you said, they're that okay. middle group, tilted to the left or tilted to the right, whichever direction. Yeah. I mean, listen, um, but we had we had some students uh, from from Texas State on last week who did some research on research literally on this very topic about the experiences of Black physical therapy students in Texas. They started their research two years ago, so they recognize this this, this was an issue two years ago. Right now, it's the thing. Right, I don't want this to be a news cycle thing All that right. cycles in and cycles out. When Colin Kaepernick was kneeling, I was someone who was like. Absolutely, like that's disrespectful. I said it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't. I literally, I bought in. Uh, uh, I had my cognitive dissonance on. I did. I had my bias. I was like, no way, disrespectful, not cool. I don't like it. I'm not even going to listen to what you're saying, man. I don't care why you're doing it. I don't like how you're doing it. That was wrong. I think now there's a bigger opportunity for people who are similar to me, who are wrong, who are now going, shit. I was wrong. And I, this is where you say marathon or sprint. You don't want to have 10 sprints. Right. right? Keep the gas pedal on now. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. otherwise because inertia is in physics right just getting yeah. everything moving we've got there's a there are there's a lot of stuff going on in the streets right now mm -hmm. to get things moving don't stop it because right. then you have to pay an even bigger price to get it moving again like so it's look at sisyphus and the rock up the hill analogy right right the rocks it's not any lighter than it was yesterday but it's moving so uh, i don't know i i you know i wish i, I could say like I, I know where this is going i don't know where this is going but i know how it's going to begin right and that's a line from the matrix i have no idea how it's going to end but i know how it's going to begin hopefully if, if this is the beginning right, right? I, who i mean I, you don't want this to end right right because the end is better <laughs> right. it's better let's go to better i like better i don't like now i thought i did i thought i thought now was okay it's not now that i now that when, when you see it now is not okay better better is better um but again good on you for having the I, I i can't i can't wrap my head around it i did the math like this weekend i did i've done twenty two thousand hours of radio and then i've done I don't know how many, five years of podcasting, you know, three episodes a week, whatever. And I've never, ever had to think and stop and say, I don't know if I should publish this. Or I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should interview this guest. Or I don't, I need to check my tone. I've never thought about that. I, like I started thinking about how I didn't have to think about that. And it pissed me off. Mm -hmm. That's a privilege. I've got it. Never had to think about it. You had to, you were going to write a blog article as a PT student and you thought about it. That sucks. That's that's not okay. I'm I'm not okay with that. Here's the line. I'm I. This is not okay. And you not having to think about that. That's on this side. That is okay. I want to get you there because I'm there. So maybe I need to lift as I climb too, right? Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I just talk while I drink beer. Who the hell knows? Um, what's in the future? You get to talk. You get to go around. And you get to. I mean shoot man you get to do a lot of things that you'd love i mean i can you can hear it in your voice you get to go around and talk about things that you're passionate about to people that you hope become passionate about what's in the future for you man paint like so um future for me uh right now i'm hoping that um i can start going to different uh colleges and universities and start kind of just spreading awareness to physical therapy profession to, you know, start, you know, combating kind of what the APTA is working towards with improving diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, you know, my goal is to kind of <clears throat> make sure that I can, once again, kind of be a mentor to people early on, because a lot of times, you know, I've noticed that people are reaching out their senior year. And, you know, of course, it's never too late, but, you know, as far as wanting to, earlier. Right, exactly. You know, wanting to come in at the next admission cycle is probably a little unrealistic. So I figured, you know, if I can get in freshman year, they know exactly what classes to take, you know, what observation hours they need, you know, things to be watching for by the time their senior year comes, you know, they don't get their interest taken by becoming, you know, a chiropractor or an MD, you know, nothing against those professions, but that, you know, I won't lose interest if this is what you want because right. of something else. Exactly. Do you get your list together. Let's do another episode because I know two things that college students are interested in alcohol and things they're interested in. Those are the two things that college students are interested in. You get that together, they're going to listen to you. Why? Because they might have implicit bias. So maybe we need you to tell them and not me, the 40 year old white dude. So put that list together, get yourself another Hennessy. Let's, let's jump on the show again. Let's do it. All right. Sounds like a plan. I like it. Uh, anything I didn't ask about that you want to talk about at all? Um, nothing that I can think of. All um, right. Well, uh, I usually say this after the microphones are off and after the show's done, but you have an open door policy. Okay. That when there is something you think that two other physical therapists need to hear, mm -hmm. that you can, you should, you are, you have an open door to come on the show. To, well, it's just, I mean, I'm never a, averse to having a drink with someone. I don't, you know, and, you know, especially when there's someone passionate. You have an open door. You just email, you say, I have something to say. I don't even, don't even tell me what it is. We'll turn the microphones and the cameras on and we'll say, Michael's got something to say. Because you were brave enough to do it when there was no one behind you. Mm -hmm. That's why. So good for you. Are you ready to do your, uh, no pressure now, but you ready to do your parting shot? 
Let's do it. Let's do the parting shot. All right, we got a cool graphic now. Last time you were in their show, we didn't have a cool graphic. Let's do the parting shot. All right. Look how we've upgraded, man. We've got like cool graffiti things and right. music in the background. Uh, parting shot brought to you by our friends from the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy, orthopt.org. Do you ever think about doing your OCS? Yes, yes, I actually am. I am. Oh, well, radio segue. Uh, ortho, uh, uh, current concepts of orthopedic physical therapy. Listen, the reference list alone on who wrote the articles that they put in their course it'll give you like it'll give you like a wrist issue just scrolling through it on your computer um they're the leaders i don't know if i need to say it enough but they're the cat they're the academy of orthopedic pt check them out online at orthopt.org we're gonna have some more contests to give away some more content from them uh in the coming months so uh make sure you pay attention there uh parting shot you've done it before right so chance for a mic drop moment like what do you want to leave we've talked about a lot and thank you for, for coming on here and talking. Thanks for continuing to talk, whether it's to a class, to a profession via a blog or a video or exchange essay or a podcast. Please don't take your foot off the gas pedal. And, but now, no pressure again. But uh, parting shot, what do you want to leave the audience with, Mike? Um, so I guess my parting shot would be, um, you know, stay committed to your goals. Um, whatever it is, you know, that you think people need to hear, um, put it out there. I mean, I think I'm living proof that, you know, although there may be some um, negativity, you know, keeping you from pressing submit, or, you know, there may be some uh, backlash that you're worried about receiving on the other end. If it's your truth, speak, in, you know, speak on it. Um, I think it's important right now, while people are listening, that, you know, we kind of use our voice because we don't know <clears throat> what our voice is giving to others. You know, it may give somebody else a voice. And I think you know, when we have a million voices, the issue becomes, you know, we get action behind the mission. So, you know, I think it's important that we just kind of keep pushing forward. And once again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, uh, it was a great quote. I'm probably going to butcher it now because I, I don't have the screen up in front of me, but it's, uh, you know, silence always benefits the oppressor. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're on the sidelines right now, you're benefiting the oppressor. So you're either in the game you're either on, you're, you're either on the you're in the game or you're not, and if you're not, you, that's benefiting the oppressor. Uh, thanks for doing what you do. I, I appreciate that um, for being bold and for being brave. It, I mean, at such a young age, I wish I was that bold and that brave now, and you're half my age. Um, we'll have you back on the show soon, man. Uh, honestly, let me know, and uh, I love to have another drink with you, man. All right, Michael Cromartie. Uh, appreciate you stopping by, man. Thank you. Thank you.